We are not special. The Earth is not at the centre of the solar system. The solar system is not at the centre of our galaxy, the Milky Way. The Milky Way is not the centre of our local group of galaxies, never mind at the centre of the universe. This is one of the most fundamental principles underlying all of astrophysics. And yet, a weird quirk of the first light ever released in the universe suggests otherwise. The universe seems to be aligned along the same axis as the solar system, dubbed the axis of evil. And it is still a big unsolved mystery in physics. So what is going on here? Is this real? And if it is, is it just a big cosmic coincidence? Or is there something else going on that our best models of the universe are missing? Or is it not real? And if that's the case, then is there something wrong with our observations or the way that we're analyzing this data? Well, in this video, we're gonna chat first about what the cosmic microwave background is, this first light in the universe. Second, what is the axis of evil in this cosmic microwave background and how we find it? using something called multipoles. And finally, third, the possible explanations suggested for this axis of evil, including whether it's real or not. But before we get to all that, I hope you've all been enjoying following along on YouTube Shorts with the redesign of my new office and studio space. Now, I've been wanting to get some really cool spacey, physics-y things to decorate my shelves with, which is why I'm really excited to be partnering with Novium. Their hover pens are the perfect combination of art and space with this perfect balance of gravity and magnetism. Just look how cool the hover pen interstellar edition looks. I mean, it floats in its dock with this 23 and a half degree tilt, right? Just an amazing nod to the Earth's axial tilt, which I love. Plus, it comes in either space black like mine, starlight silver, Mars magma, or Neptune blue. Or the premium edition also has a real meteorite shard embedded to just make it even more incredible. And as both a space and stationary nerd, I just really appreciate how gorgeous of a pen it is to write with. Their refillable and their hover pen future edition also comes with an interchangeable tip. So yes, you can use it as a rollerball or a fountain pen. They feel so premium and high-end. And honestly, I think it's the perfect gift either for yourself or for the space and stationary nerd in your life, especially with both Mother's Day and Father's Day coming up soon. Even Time Magazine agrees. They named it one of the best inventions of 2022. So I think these pens have got a permanent spot on my desk from now on. And if you want to grab yourself one, you can either use the links in the video description down below or scan the QR code up here. Plus, if you use the code Dr. Becky, you'll get 10% off all of their hover pens with free international shipping available to most countries worldwide. So thanks again to Novium for sponsoring this video. And now let's chat first about what the cosmic microwave background actually is. But when I describe it quite quickly and in passing on this channel, I often say that it's the oldest light in the universe, which is true, but where did it actually come from? Well, when the universe was much younger, in the first few hundred thousand years of its lifetime, it was much denser and also much hotter, which meant that the photons, the particles of light, and then all of the matter was just in one big, great, glowing plasma that was opaque. It was only when the universe expanded and cooled enough that electrons could then be bound together with protons to make atoms. That meant that the photons, the particles of light, could free stream for the first time. The universe became transparent. This is the first light that was ever emitted in the universe that we can still detect today. It happened when the universe was about 3,000 Kelvin and when it was around about 380,000 years old, and it happened everywhere at once. So whichever direction we look in at the sky, we can see that light because light takes time to travel to us at the fastest speed there is. So this is why we observe it across the whole sky, and then we flatten the inside of that curved sphere that we've observed down onto a flat page, and so that's why we get this egg shape that you see all the time in all sky astronomy images, whether it's taken in microwaves, like for the cosmic microwave background, or even in visible light. And so what you're seeing when you look at this image of the cosmic microwave 
microwave background is an echo of what happened in the early universe. So bluer patches show where the universe was slightly cooler, and then redder patches show where the universe was slightly warmer. Now we've been studying the cosmic microwave background for decades now. It was first predicted back in 1948 by Alpha and Herman using the work of Gamow, and then it was first detected in 1964 by Penzias and Wilson, who then received the Nobel Prize in physics in 1978 for the discovery. Since then, there's been a slew of telescopes that have been launched to study the cosmic microwave background in ever-increasing detail, starting with NASA's COBE satellite in 1989, NASA's WMAP satellite in 2001, and then ESA's Planck satellite in 2009. Now, it was in data taken by the WMAP satellite that an oddity was first spotted in the cosmic microwave background data. Which brings me to what is the axis of evil in the CMB and how we find it using something called multipoles. So the WMAP data was published back in 2003 by Bennett and collaborators and had maps of the cosmic microwave background in detail like had never been seen before. And a few months later in 2004, Ericsson and collaborators pointed out an unexpected feature of it. There was an alignment along an axis of some of the multipoles. So what are multipoles? Well, essentially they're the parts of the maths that we use to describe the cosmic microwave background. It can be described essentially as a sum of lots and lots of parts. The first and simplest of those parts just being the average temperature of the cosmic microwave background taken across the whole sky. That's what's known as the monopole. The second part is the cosmic microwave background split into two, taking the average temperature of parts of the sky separated by 180 degrees. That's the dipole. Then there's the quadrupole with the average of parts of the sky separated by 90 degrees. Then the octopole separated by 45 degrees and so on and so on until you get to like the 4,000th pole with tiny variations in it the multipoles. Adding all of these together should give you the random distribution that we see in the entire cosmic microwave background. Now we know that one of the most dominant features in the cosmic microwave background is that dipole feature, and it's due to our motion through the universe with respect to that first light. So that's a combination of the Earth's motion around the sun, the sun's motion around the center of the Milky Way, and then the Milky Way's motion through the universe. And it's the Milky Way's motion through the universe that dominates that some, but you have to account for everything to make sure that you do get it right. But what it means is that the cosmic microwave background is slightly hotter in the direction that the Milky Way moves, so it's got a smaller wavelength, and it's colder in the opposite direction, so therefore it's got a longer wavelength. And that's just due to a traditional Doppler shift to the microwave light waves of light because of our movement. And we have to correct for that movement, for this dipole feature of the cosmic microwave background, if we want to study the early universe in great detail. But one thing we can do is draw an axis through that dipole, from the hot spot to the cold spot. And that axis points in the direction of the Milky Way's motion. Now, if you do this for all of the multipoles and you draw this line between the hot and the cold spots, then you get these axes, which if the universe really is isotropic, i.e. the same in all directions, and homogeneous, i.e. roughly the same everywhere, which is an assumption that underpins our best model of the universe and the Big Bang Theory. If that's the case, then all of those axes should be in completely different and random directions from each other. And when you look at all the axes you draw for all of these multipoles way out to the thousandths of a pole, that is the case, except for the quadrupole and the octopole. The axes of these two multipoles are aligned. And this is what's come to be known as the axis of evil, with Land and Maguizhu in 2005 first using the phrase. So what are some possible explanations for this axis of evil? Well, I think the possible explanations for this split into two camps, either that it's real or that it's not real. Well, firmly in the not real camp, you've got the usual arguments that there's something wrong with the data. Now that would be fine if it was just the WMAP data that had showed this, but the Planck data also showed the same thing. For it to be not real and show up in both satellite data sets, then either there's some systematic error that 
plagues both of them, which is unlikely, or that these two separate science teams separated by a decade both made the same data analysis error, which is possible, but again, unlikely. Sticking in the not real camp, some of my colleagues have even argued that this could just be a quirk of randomness, right? If you look at data for long enough and you break it down repeatedly, then familiar patterns are going to start to appear in random data just by chance. And while you could dismiss the axes of two multipoles aligning as a statistical fluke, there's two more spanners in the works here. First of all, the axis of evil is perpendicular, so 90 degrees opposite to the dipole axis. And secondly, this axis of evil is aligned with our solar system axis. So essentially like the axis running between the north and the south poles of the sun. It means that the cosmic microwave background is ever so slightly, like a few micro Kelvin cooler on the north side of the solar system and ever so slightly warmer on the south side of the solar system. We've already accounted for the motion of the solar system in the dipole. There shouldn't be anything in the quadrupole or the octopole. If we've already accounted for the solar system's motion, then the cosmic microwave background should not care about the solar system. Like, it was released billions of years before the sun or the solar system was even formed. So it is weird and very hard to explain away as like a cosmic coincidence or a statistical fluke. It's almost too coincidental. People have even looked at this using Occam's razor, right? The concept that the simplest model is usually the best one and still not been able to explain away the axis of evil. So that moves us into the camp of the axis of evil is real. And if that's the case, then there's something that we're missing in our best model of the universe. Perhaps there's some property of the universe that we don't know about yet, either some component or some law of physics that's been missed. Or there are some that argue that the axis of evil suggests that on a really big scale, the universe has a weird shape, like a donut. I think the more popular argument is that we're missing something in our models. That was what Landon Magaju argued for back in 2005 when they dubbed this the axis of evil. And this argument pops up a lot when we discover massive structures in the universe that according to our best model the universe shouldn't exist. Like for example the big ring that was discovered earlier this year in January that I covered in that month's Night Sky News episode. But some of my other colleagues have tried to explain this as the effects of galaxies around us through something known as gravitational lensing. So in Einstein's theory theory of general relativity, our current best model of gravity. Gravity can be explained as massive objects curving space itself, so that if light travels on that space, its path gets bent. For example, if you have a massive cluster of galaxies in the way of something in the background. So Vail in 2005 ran a simulation of the cosmic microwave background, but added in a big super cluster of galaxies that would bend the light and was able to recreate the quadrupole and octopole patterns that were found by WMAP. And Vale just happened to run his simulations with a supercluster of galaxies in the same location and distance from Earth as the Shapley supercluster of galaxies, the largest concentration of galaxies in our nearby universe. But the issue with this idea is that although it solves one big problem of the axis of evil, it spawns tens of lots of little problems that also haven't been solved yet. So this is why, you know, when anyone tries to raise this idea, oh, maybe it's because of lensing of this cluster or this supercluster or whatever this big structure is that's been found over here, it always tends to get shot down. And that's really all I have for you. And I know that this is not going to be a very satisfying end to this video, but that's the reality of where we are. You know, this is still an unsolved problem in physics, one that my colleagues are actively researching and trying to solve. Look, someone will eventually crack this, either as a problem on its own or as part of a much bigger problem in astrophysics or cosmology. But I'm sure that, you know, as we take more observations, the universe will eventually point us in the right direction. We are not, not, but, 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 we are not special. What about if I like fully lower everything down? Whoa, he, who? Oh. Ah, why isn't that tightening on that? Oh my God, I'm just, uh, what? Well, that's worrying. Have I like over tightened that thing and now it just won't go anywhere? Cause Oh no. I'll be back in a minute.
these axes, which if the universe is truly isotropic, is isotropic? <laughs> a little bit of Sean Connery creeping in, he's still on to me, even in this new house. <laughs> warmer on the north side of the solar system and slightly cooler on the south side of the solar system. No, other way around. Other way around. I guessed that was wrong. I cry a lot but I am so productive. It's an art.